Hey bookies! Today we are going to go over some historical fiction wrecks, so let's get started. Now why I decided to recommend books, historical fiction books, in November, I don't know. I decided to do this sometime last year, I think based on some random mass article. Anyways, historical fiction <laughs> for my channel. Um, I have a lot of historical fiction. I was raised in a family that loved history, um, so I have quite a big chunk of them. Um, quite a big wreck for other books that I don't have yet. And I also have some historical fiction fantasy in here that we're also going to discuss. I'm going to go over ones that are not in the fantasy realm, though, so straight historical fiction. The first one that I'm talking a lot about this month is The Killing Code by Ellie Marnie. I absolutely love this one. Um, and this one, our main character um, in during the time of World War II, um, she assumes the identity of her late... Um, char well person she took care of the person that she took care of had a chronic illness and they unfortunately died that's not really a spoiler it happens in like the first couple it's like like the first chapter um poor girl anyways so she assumes the identity and she becomes a code breaker for the u.s military um and everything's going peachy keen until people start showing up dead on the base and it's up to her and her group of friends to figure out what is happening and what's going on think oh that's strange I swear there was something green right here oh there it is again my camera's effing with me today oh it's like tripod mode <laughs> I, don't know. I don't know it looks like a green aliens right here so if something is actually showing up I'm sorry we're just gonna blame Richard the ghost because he's quite a dick anyways definitely recommend this book um if you're looking for something in the world war ii setting but not set in like battleground area i also have i don't have the fourth one um it got stuck on the bookshelf <laughs> i was too lazy to get it i also have like two other copies of it somewhere around this house anyways it's the stalking jack the ripper series um and these covers i think were from beacon box but um basically this is set in when was Jack Ripper around? Like Victorian-ish London? I'm pretty sure it was Victorian and not Edwardian. Um, those two time periods always confuse me. Anyways, um, set during the time of Jack the Ripper, he is out and about and causing havoc. Our main character, um, who is not, not like other girls, <laughs> um, she decides that she wants to solve the case. She is a, um, wanted to be like, mortician stuffing like that our main character decides to take it upon herself to solve the mystery um using science she's a very intelligent girl um she makes friends with with this other character he is an intelligent man um and together they throughout the series they go and they solve different cases so the first one is about um you know jack the ripper the next one is about prince dracula the third one is set on the type is it the titanic no no, it's not the Titanic, sorry. The third one is um, about Houdini. And the fourth one is... Um, I can never remember his name, but he was a serial killer during the Chicago World Fair. Um, that guy that ran a horror hotel with the, with the impossible rooms and stuff like that. Interesting fella. Horrible man. Anyways, um, so it goes through different historical events like that. It's really, really cool if you're into mystery and want something that, like, um, like involves mysteries and historical fiction, that one's going to be a great series for you. I only have the second book of this one because <laughs> I've yet to buy the first one, but it is The Wolf Den and The House with the Golden Door, both by Elodi Harper. These are set during um, ancient Pompeii. Um, and our main character is a good time worker, 
um, enslaved, of course, sold into that industry. And it's about her trying to figure out how to escape it. Now, the second book ended on kind of a cliffhanger. And since we're in ancient Pompeii, I'm kind of anticipating, um, you know, like, boom, boom with Vesuvius. Um, I don't know if that's going to happen in book three, but it would make for kind of a poetic ending. Anyways, um, yeah, I recommend this one. So if you're looking for something that's set in ancient Pompeii, this is going to be your bet. Ancient Ro Roman stuff as well, ancient Greek stuff as well. A lot of stuff with gods and goddesses, um, mythology, stuff like that. That's in there. It's really good. But very adult. Very adult for my YA and younger viewers. Very, very adult. Another one I'm going to recommend is Rebel Spy by Veronica Rossi. This one wasn't as good as some of the other historical books that I've read, um, but I keep it around because I haven't read another book that talks about this time period. Well, not this time period, but this uh, historical event that happened. This is based on Agent 355. And if you don't know who, like, Agent 355 is, um, during the American Revolution, George Washington was incorporating spies into his ranks to figure out what the British military was doing and the British military vice versa. Um, one of those was Agent 355, who historians believe was a woman. Um, and this is the fictionalized tale of... Who that woman might have been. Um, this is pretty good. Again, it's not my favorite retelling, but it's very interesting how the author um, looked at Agent 355 with the very little, little information that we have and managed to make a whole book out of it. Um, it's interesting. I will give it that. It's very interesting. If you're looking for something that talks about um, the aftermath of World War II, specifically with the Berlin Wall, you're going to want Walls by L.M. Elliot. It talks about um, the wall, the history, the um, in the eyes of this child. I think it's kind of middle grade aimed. I'm not entirely sure I can remember that. Um, but yeah, it talks about that, what was going on in both West and East Berlin. And uh, if I remember correctly, it also talks about the fall. Um, so yeah, it's really good. And I believe that there at the back of the book, there's like a lot of historical documentation. Yeah, a lot of historical documentation and stuff like that. Um, so just for that alone, it's really interesting. If you want to read like, um, you know, see like old pictures and stuff like that. This is going to be a really good book for that. Also, the history and all of the stuff that's surrounding the Berlin Wall um, is interesting. I had a history teacher when I was in high school. Um, he would smuggle stuff. Um, I believe mainly it was like Bibles, but um, knowing him, um, it wouldn't surprise me if it was other things as well. But he would um, smuggle things. Um, between the walls and stuff like that. So super, super interesting. Um, and he had photos. It was really cool. Another one I'm going to recommend is Look at the Titanic by Stacey Lee. Um, like the title says, Titanic. This is happening on the Titanic. Um, this is a fictionalized account of our main character who is named Valora Luck, um, who is, smuggles her way onto the Titanic to talk to her brother, to convince him to... Um, not leave England, stuff like that. Um, there's a lot of history and stuff that happens. I don't want to get that much into it because a lot of it's kind of spoiler, spoilery. Anyway, she smuggles about along board to convince her brother to do, to stay. They've never really been apart since they were children. They've always kind of had each other's backs. And as at, the Titanic does it, is Titanic thing. Um, it's very moving. The ending is going to make you cry. Yeah, it's really good. I thought that this was one of the better Titanic stories that I've read recently. If you're looking for something that is talking about, like, early Broadway, if you're really, really into Broadway, Maisie is going to be your best fit. This is by Melanie Crowder, um, and it features our main character, who is named Maisie, um, who has has the bug to perform. She wants to perform. She wants to be on Broadway, but she lives in Nebraska, which is very far away from New York for the international piece that is very, very far away. And this is 1959, so it's very, very expensive. Um, but our main character does make her way to Broadway, and it showcases a lot of um, what was going on with early Broadway, how people were um, getting casted, how that process was. It was really interesting. Um, I'm not that big of a Broadway fan. I do like musicals and stuff like that, but I'm, and I did do theater in high school, um, but not a lot of it. But even still with my very limited 
um, knowledge and stuff like that about theater um, and interest. Like it's like a it's like a mid level interest. Um, I found this super super interesting. So I believe that if you are a big theater nerd, this is going to be an amazing book for you to definitely check out. If you're into prose and you want um, a historical fiction book that is told entirely in prose, The Door of No Return by Kwame Alexander is going to be an amazing read for you. Um, this one focuses on our main character who is living in 1860, what would later become Guyana. Um, and if you know the time period, like what was happening in that time period, the big thing, um, you do know that at some point in this book, he does get um, captured and sold into slavery. Um, it's a very moving book. Again, told entirely in prose, and I'm not going to say anything else about it because it was so good. I recommend that you read it if you're if you're wanting to learn more about that period in uh, world history, that unfortunate period. I also want to recommend The Black Kids by Christina Reed Hammond or Hammond Reed. I am so sorry. I can't remember the author's name fully, um, but it was so good. So this book takes place in the 90s and um, in L.A. That is the time period that Rodney King was almost beaten to death by uh, L.A. police um, and kind of the catalyst for the L.A. riots. This book goes into that, and it's a very good, like, um, POV um, perspective of it from from a black girl's perspective. Um, and our main character, she was kind of raised in privilege. Her family is not wanting for money. Uh, they are very well off and stuff like that. She hangs out with these popular kids um, who don't see race. Um, but you see the transition and you see what happens as you get further and further into the book. I thought that the book was phenomenal um, and one of those must-reads. Something that you have to read. Another book that I thought was really good, especially from the POV narratives and stuff like that, it is We Are Not Free by Ch uh, Tracy Chi or Tracy... I'm, I'm so sorry. I'm having a hard time remembering author's last names. It's like four in the morning. <laughs> um, anyways, so this book... Um, is told in multi-POV um, with all of these different Asian children who are put in an internment camp um, during World War II. America, in its very racist ways, um, decided that they were going to round up um, the Asian population. Uh, I think they specifically targeted the Japanese, um, but, you know, anyways, uh, the Asian population and put them in internment camps um, these were little camps that were surrounded by fences and stuff like that. These people were held captive, basically. Um, and despite what they tell you in the history books, it was not all fun and games. I don't know why my history book taught us that. Because, like, I remember when I was learning American history, um, the books, like, showed, like, um, Asian children playing with, I think it was marbles and card games in these camps and like they were smiling and stuff like that and it just gave off this impression that like oh it was like a summer camp no 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 bad i hate the propaganda in history books anyways so this is a really good pov perspective of that um time period told through multi pov it's really interesting i highly recommend it if you're looking for something that is not told a lot in american history books um and that has just now recently come to light and i mean like rec I, I say recently me and i okay i mean recently as in like it was just now put in media and come to light as in just came to media and told to told to people and they were like oh i didn't know about that it's because history books in america are just full of propaganda anyways so um it is the angel of greenwood by randy peak um this book is so moving it's a love story that's set in greenwood oklahoma and if you don't know that place or anything it was basically black, black wall street this area in oklahoma uh was home to rich black families, um, lots of black owned businesses. It was thriving. It was amazing. And then the Tulsa race massacre of 1921 happened and that whole area was just leveled. If I remember correctly, 
people describe that there were planes that were coming and terrorizing people and fires were set. People were driven out of their homes and it was due to white supremacy. This book talks a lot about it and it's really, really good. Um, I recommend it because it's one of those books that need to be taught in a history class, need to be read in a history class because it, it examines a part of American history that has been covered up and should be come and should come to light and be told for centuries. That's the only way that we're going to stop shit like this from happening again is if we keep reminding people that it's already happened. If you're wanting something that is um, a retelling historical fiction book, um, I'm going to recommend So Many Beginnings, uh, which is by Bethany C. Morrow, I believe. Uh, this book, so good. It's, it is a little woman retelling set there in the Reconstruction era, I believe, um, and completely filled with black voices. It's it, the sisters in here, um, Joe, Amy, all of them, um, they are black girls. And it's during the Reconstruction era, um, after slavery and everything like that. So it talks a lot about um, the ending of the Civil War, um, what was happening during their enslavement period, and what comes next. Um, and it's very true to Little Women. It was so good. I listened to it on audiobook, and I just absolutely loved every second that I was listening to it. I highly recommend this one. And then I have a couple of middle grade um arranged books. The first one being the entirety of the American Girl uh, historical collection. Um, these books are so good in telling you different points in history, the American Revolution, to escaping slavery, um, to the immigration boom that happened in America, uh, World War II, the Great Depression, um, all of those different things, the 50s, the 60s, the 70s, so good. So good at telling all of those stories um, from POV narratives, from different POV narratives. Um, yeah, I recommend them, especially for uh, younger readers that are trying to get into historical fiction because they are told in such a way that it becomes really compelling for them and it makes it really easy to learn. I'm also recommending The Bluest Sky, which I recently read and fell in love with. Um, this book is from the POV of a little boy that is in Cuba. His family's escape from the communism in Cuba to America. Um, so it goes a lot into what was going on in Cuba during that time period um, and how they plotted their escape and stuff like that, what was happening. It's really interesting and for something that was kind of recent, this is the 80s, um, kind of recently happened, it's not told a lot in history books. It's just kind of glossed over. And it's really interesting in how America's tension um, in history with Cuba has led us to es es ex accepting their refugees and that whole program and stuff like that. Again, super interesting and something that is also not really told in history books in America. And the last um, historical fiction book before I get into the historical fiction fantasy ones that I have, it's a very short list, so hold on, I promise you. Um, it is In the Neighborhood of True by Susan Kaplan Carlton. This book takes place in 1958 and after the death of her father, um, our main character, True, and her mother uproot themselves and go to live elsewhere. Um, it's a lot about finding identity, what's going on during that time period, and it talks a lot about, like, um, racial tensions, Ku Klux Klan, stuff like that, um, white supremacy, all that stuff. Um, super interesting. Our main character is Jewish, and the brunt of the story is them hiding their Jewish identity um, and wrestling with that part of themselves and figuring out if they want it to come to light or not. Um, very moving middle grade story. I absolutely loved it, and I recommend it. All right, now that that's over, we have um, a couple of historical fiction fantasy books. So these are books that um, are set or... Um, kind of set in historical periods, um, but with a fantasy twist like uh, something happened and it changed the course of history or there's powers involved, stuff like that. The first one I'm going to start off with is the Lady Jane's series um, slash um, the one I recently read. It is my contemporary Mary, so the Lady Jane's series slash the Mary's, the new Mary series. Um, this one specifically talks about Mary, Queen of Scotland, and her 
time in Versailles and what was happening then. Um, it takes a fantasy twist because our main character can shapeshift into a mouse. She belongs to a group of people that can do that. Um, and all of her um, ladies in waiting can do that as well. Um, so set during like that um, time period and everything like that. So yeah, I thought that this one was super good and I loved how it tied in to um, My Lady Jane, which was one of the first, um, I think the first Lady Janie's book. Um, absolutely loved it. I can't wait to read the rest of them. I can't wait to read the Lady Jane series as well. All of them um, have like some sort of twist to them and everything. Um, but they're fun little books that, um, that talk a lot about what was going on historically during that time period. So now I have two books that are set in historical time periods, but there is a time twist to them. The first one is Wolf by Wolf by Ryan Grodden. Um, in this one, um, it is told where, um, Hitler won. Um, and every year there is this motorbike race that goes through all of, like, Europe and stuff like that. Our main character is a Jewish person who was experimented on um, and escaped um, the camps and stuff like that. Um, and now they are working for the resistance and they are going to shapeshift into one of the best motorcycle um, competitors and try to win and use that opportunity to kill Hitler. That is the plan. That is not exactly what happened, so it's super interesting, um, and I know it sounds so weird, but trust me on this. Give it, like, a couple of chapters. You'll be hooked. It's so good. And then I have The Beholder um, and the sequel. I can't remember what the sequel is. Um, I'll pop the cover somewhere on here. But anyways, this is The Beholder by Anna Bright. This is basically... Um, if there was a monarchy in America, and I know a lot of other books talk about that as well. Um, but basically, if there was a monarchy in America still, and this is our main character's trip to find and secure a husband for the future of her people, but she starts to question why she's doing this and everything. Um, the way that the um, small change in history affected the rest of the world is really interesting, and... Um, while this is mostly romance driven, this is a really good historical fiction fantasy. So yeah, <laughs> that is a lot of historical fiction book recs that I have for you this year. Um, absolutely love every single one of them. I love historical fiction books and I just love to read them and recommend them and everything like that. And to discover new historical events that I might not be aware of or anything like that. So yeah, that is it. So thank y'all for watching. I'll see y'all later. Bye!